Welcome to Talking Cybersecurity with HMS Industrial Networks. Hi, my name is Jason Block. I am the Solution Manager for Industrial Internet of Things products here at HMS Industrial Networks. Today we're going to discuss hardware root of trust. So, what is hardware root of trust and how is this evolving? How is this coming to an impact? Uh, how we handle computing in our daily lives. Uh, and everything from you know, computerized systems that we use PCs down to devices that are used on factory floors. So hardware root of trust, for the quick and easy explanation of it, is a way of ensuring throughout the entire boot process that all the pieces of the code that are running on there are, are valid and checked for, from a secure perspective. So the easiest way to think about this is, is to think about a device that you use every day which is your personal computer. When you interact with your personal computer and you start it up, there are essentially five steps that a personal computer goes through once you uh, start that up. So first is when you power on the system. When you power on your personal computer, the first thing that that computer does is it goes to the read-only memory uh, and runs a specific piece of code within the CPU that initiates the boot process that occurs. So, once that occurs, it goes into basically the POST procedure. Uh, POST stands for Power On Self Test. Uh, at this point, the, what, what happens there is that the initial components, things like the CPU, memory, and everything, are checked to make sure that there are no hardware errors uh, from that perspective and that everything is starting up uh, fine. So once you've completed the POST process, what happens then is that the, the device BIOS and BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System, uh, is, is, is loaded for each of the devices in there. So you're actually building up a specific boot sequence list that occurs for all of the devices in the system. So then this goes directly into the device boot. Uh, with the device boot, what happens is that all of the BIOS and all of the systems are checked and verified for interoperability. So making sure that the entire BIOS is in good operating order and all of the devices in there can, are interoperable with each other. Uh, once that occurs, once that has been successful, now that the, your computer can actually go into loading the operating system. Uh, that operating system is loaded from whatever hard storage that you have on there, a hard drive, something along those lines, is loaded into the, re, the, the, the random access memory of the system that you're interacting with on there. So once that's done, it goes through its loading process and it does all of its checks to verify that that's a good working order. And now occurs is what is called transfer of control. Uh, with your uh, PC that you're using from a day-to-day -day basis, transfer control is given over to you as the user. Uh, potentially with some dedicated systems, there might be a specific application that we're transferring control over to. But this is essentially how the normal boot process works on here. So what does hardware root of trust bring to this? Um, hardware root of trust is really a way of, once again, checking um, through each of these processes and adding essentially think of it like a security guard that exists between each of these different steps that we're going in here. Once again, to verify that this is the, 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 the all the code that is running on there is signed, is valid, is keyed properly, everything along those lines. So the way that is accomplished is through what is called a secure element. A secure element is a very specific chip that is, that is typically loaded on, on top that is installed into the system itself. This secure element contains all of the cryptographic keys that are necessary for running through these, these five steps up here when you, when you start your computer. So these, key, these keys are loaded from a key vault, and this key vault oftentimes is a very specific black box or some type of hardware appliance that's used specifically for that secure element. So these keys are generated here, and then they are loaded onto the secure element through a secure channel. And the nice thing about secure elements is once these keys are on there, this is not a a piece of silicone that can be rewritten to uh, through through a, you know an application or a program that's in there, so it can't be reprogrammed in this case to do other things. So it makes it very hardened against um, attacks. These type of things here. So essentially, you know, the secure element with the keys and all basically the, the signatures and all those protocols there. What occurs now through each of these processes is that each of these processes are checked for both two things: that the public keys match. And then also the signatures match for each of these pro, you know, processes here. One of the things that you'll see in systems that deploy hardware root of trust is that BIOS, which is a, is, which is a legacy environment for hardware checks, has been replaced by the unified extensible firmware interface. 
So that's the what you see normally used nowadays within uh, within within hardware which trust in secure securely booted systems. Um, so that's never here. If there's a failure in any of these processes, then there what happens now with with hardware trust and the secure boot is that there's a recovery process that goes through each of these to basically find a valid piece of code to run on there. So this is essentially what hardware root of trust brings to systems today, to with your personal computers and also the devices and systems that run on your factory floors.